So let's start. You are only watching. I'm going to start by reviewing some basic linear functions. If I ask you to graph the function f of x equals 5, please note that's the same as the equation y equals 5. f of x acts as y. I go on the y-axis to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I don't just stop there. I have to draw a line that cuts through the y-axis at 5. Let's try another one x equals 3. This is not a mistake. This is not f of x. This is simply x equals 3. I go on the x-axis to 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I have to cut through the x-axis at the point 3. If you see the equation y equals negative 1 half x plus 3, where do I start? I do not start on the x-axis. I start on the y-axis at 3. And then this negative sign bumps up to the top if it's in the middle. Negative 1 over 2 says I first drop down 1 and then to go to the right 2. Drop down 1 and to the right 2. Drop down 1 and to the right 2. Then taking your ID, you are going to go through those points and making sure that it is as accurate as possible. So I do want to give you an example. Some students that I've started to grade their papers go like this. Okay, I see no points. I'm not even going to grade that. I need to see where is your starting point and how did you actually achieve this line. Um, let's go with one more. What if I simply said to you f of x equals x? Well, what is in front? It's like a 1 over 1 and there's nothing in back. So I'm starting at 0 and then the slope is up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and so on. Again, don't just leave the dots. We are going to connect them. Okay, so next we're going to review absolute value. So y equals, and I'm going to say 2 times the absolute value, x minus 3 minus 4. The first thing I have to see when I'm grading this is that you are going to go to the correct point. I'm going to call it bullseye. So we're going to go, this lies to us, and this tells the truth. I'm going to go 3, not to the left, but 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, and drop down 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is my bullseye. I want to see that on the graph. I want to see where your bullseye is. If I don't see your bullseye, I don't grade that particular problem. Next, after I find my bullseye, I'm going to refer to, so sorry, let me grab a new one. I'm going to refer to what you will be provided. You will be provided with this paper. So I'm going to use this. And this would be the parent function. Now, how do I use that? Whenever the number out front is anything other than 1, I take that value times the y's always. So times 2 gives you 4, times 2, times 2, times 2, and times 2. Now, how does that help us? 0, 0 for every common function we're working with. 0, 0 is always your bullseye. What does this mean? It means from the bullseye, go 1 to the right and 2 up. If it's positive to the right, if it's positive up. 1 to the right and 2 up. From the bullseye, go 2 to the right and 4 up. 2 to the right and 4 up. Go 1 to the left and 2 up. 1 to the left and 2 up. Go 2 to the left and 4 up. Go 2 to the left and 4 up. And that's our function. Let's look at the next type. I'm looking at a square root. And so I'm looking at this square root function right now and I'm going to graph it using ordered pairs from the parent function. So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to figure out where is this bullseye. That means where am I translating it or shifting it. So opposite of what you think, just like this was, um, it lies to me and it tells me the truth. So I'm going to go not 6 to the right, but 6 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Don't make a dot and then go 4 up. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is my new bullseye right there. I've taken care of those two points. Whenever the number out front that's stuck to it is anything other than positive 1, I'm going to change the shape of this by taking that value, I'm working at square roots, and taking the y times it. So 0 times negative 3 is 0 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. This will be provided to you. 0, 0 is always the bullseye. So I'm already at 0, 0. Positive 1, say so I go 1 to the right, but it's a negative 3. I drop down 3. 1 to the right and drop down 3. So sorry. 4 to the right, drop down 6 because it's negative. 
four to the right and drop down six. And the final one is nine to the right and drop down nine. So nine to the right and drop down nine, two, four. And then I connect the points, don't just leave the dots, I connect the points and there's my function. Let's look at this next example. So I'm seeing a quantity squared. It looks like this, it's a quadratic function. I'm gonna use these inputs and output values from this parent function to help me graph this. Just like everything else I've done, notice the pattern. This is lying to me and this is telling the truth. So I'm gonna go four to the left, one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna drop down six right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to see that bullseye. Okay, so I've taken care of those. Now next, I notice that there's no number out front. Whenever the number is anything other than positive one, I need to multiply by the y. But what if the number out front is a positive one? It's a hidden positive one. Well, then you don't multiply. You take exactly what you have. Remember, zero, zero is always your bullseye. So this is my bullseye at zero, zero. This says because it's positive and positive, I'm gonna go one to the right and one up. One to the right and one up. Two to the right and four up. Two to the right, one, two, three, four. Back to the bullseye. One to the left, one up. Now how do you know to go to the left? Because it's negative. And two to the left and four up. So one to the left, one up. And two to the left and four up. And now I'm connecting. Notice this is a U shape, not a V shape. Why is it that I believe the last one will be the most confusing? Because it doesn't mean you've mastered these concepts and maybe even your teacher didn't hit on them very strong. But I will share with you that in eighth and ninth grade, the standards of linear and absolute value are there in square root. And as you go through ninth grade, you revisit these along with quadratic functions. It doesn't mean you memorized it or you mastered it, but it was part of the curriculum. This is brand new to you, and that's why I think this one may be a little confusing, but remember, I do provide this for you. It's the same concept as everything else. So this lies to us. So instead of adding, or instead of going zero to the left, we'd go zero to the right, but zero means don't even move. So I'm not gonna go left or right, I'm simply gonna go up one. That's my bullseye, that's my bullseye. Now the number out front is different than positive one, it's a negative one, so I need to come back here, and I always go to the y's, taking this times negative one to get eight, times negative one to get one, times negative one, times negative one, and times negative one. Remember, zero, zero is always going to be the bullseye, and sometimes very few, but some of these problems, just a few, may go slightly off the graph. This means go one to the right of the bullseye and one down because it's negative. One to the right and one down. Two to the right and eight down. Two to the right and eight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. One to the left of the bullseye and one up. One to the left and one up. And lastly, this is where it's gonna go off the graph. Two to the left of the bullseye and eight up. Two to the left and so this is gonna be six, seven, eight, so somewhere right about there. And I wanna reiterate, if I just see things like this, I'm not gonna get credit. I wanna see where's your bullseye and where are these points.